little boy got sent to bed. It is regular time. The little boy, as is often the case, wasn't quite ready to go to bed. Dad? What? I'm thirsty. Can I have a drink of water? No. You had your chance. Now go to sleep. Five minutes later. Dad! Dad, I'm thirsty. I need a drink of water. Can you bring me a drink of water? No, I told you before. It's time to go to sleep. And, and if you keep at this, I'm going to have to spank you. So about five minutes later, Dad, when you come up to spank me, can you bring a drink of water? Water. It's an amazing thing. All by itself, doesn't look like much. Go ahead, shake it up. It ain't going to happen. Might make a few bubbles. It isn't very cold now. It's been sitting here all day. amazing what that can do, isn't it? You plant a seedling and you get some flowers, put a little water on it, and the seedling grows or the flowers keep their bloom. If you're thirsty enough, it can save your life. Sometimes even if you aren't thirsty, it can save your life. Richard found out that if you don't drink enough, bad things happen. Drink up. my way of saying, if you decide you need a drink of water during church, you better take it. <laughs> water. Physically, it does a tremendous amount for us and through us and with us. It, it, it is, you know, Civilizations used to build their whole communities based on where the water was. Because they knew that water equaled life. Then we got into the 20th century and we decided that you didn't have to settle near the water. We could just ship it in plastic bottles to you. Right? That's all you need is a plastic bottle and you've got water. More than 60% of Americans alive today are dehydrated. So six out of 10 of you, so in this room, about 60 of you are dehydrated. Drink up. You wanna feel better? Drink some water. You have a headache? Drink some water. You hungry and it's not quite mealtime? Drink some water. Your skin not quite what you want it to look like? Drink some water. 
your hair not as strong or is quite the right color. Well, I don't know if it works about gray, but. <laughs> Some of you need to drink more water. I wasn't going to point at anybody. Do you ever notice that if you just look at the water, you get thirsty? Drink up. You see, what, all kinds of things I've learned over the course of the last three years. Um, I learned when I was over 300 pounds that I was dehydrated. So I started drinking water. It's kind of a miracle drug, just so you know. It makes every organ in your body work better. Every single one of them, including your skin. I learned that one day at Target. Some of you have been to Target, right? <laughs> I'm out in Oregon with my daughter, Jay Lee, and, and, and we were buying some things, and, and I will be honest, we were probably buying some femi femi feminine kinds of things, so she was trying to keep me a little bit away from her. So I hung back in the line, and I was reading The Inquirer. Well, you know, I do need to keep up on who's marrying who for the 14th time. And I can hear them talking in the background, but I'm not thinking anything about it. They're, my daughter is a whole lot like me. She can carry on a conversation with three strangers and two friends all at the same time and have four different conversations going. And in the dark dark recesses of my mind, I hear Jay Lee say, Dad, she's talking to you. <laughs> Sorry, I was involved with the inquirer. <laughs> she looks at me, the checker looks at me, and says, you have the nicest skin I've ever seen. She says, what do you do? I said, I drink 140 to 150 ounces of water every day. Just so you know, that's about 10 of these. I know some of you probably have to go to the bathroom just from hearing me talk about it. She looked at me and she says, no, you have to do something. Do you, do, what kind of product do you use on your face? I'm going, I drink water. <laughs> and my daughter finally says, he drinks water. <laughs> Jesus says a lot about water. Scripture says a lot about water. Water is one of those things in the Bible that keeps showing up over and over and over again in reference to life. But today we're just going to concentrate on one little sentence that Jesus talks about. It's John chapter 7, verse 37. Anyone? That's the best part. Anyone? Anyone? Go ahead, look at the people around you. Anyone means the person sitting next to you, across from you, way back there in the back, way up there in the front, way over there, as far away from you in the building as they can be. It means them too. It means the people that you don't like out in the community. It means the people you like in the community. It means your bosses, and it means your employees. It means anyone that comes to Jesus will never thirst again because he is the water of life. He's the great provider 
of life. I love the story that, uh, of Jesus in chapter 4 of John's Gospel, the woman at the well. He meets a woman at the well. She's come out to draw water. Why? Because water is how you live. And he says, well, you know, if you drink this water, you're going to be thirsty again. But if you drink the water I give you, you'll never be thirsty again. Well, I'll be honest, the woman at the well was just like you and I when we hear that. We think, well, how is he going to do that? I wake up and I'm thirsty every morning. Those kids running around here, they were all ready to have a drink because they were thirsty. Some of you were tired just watching them run around and thirsty. Have a drink. Jesus understood that each and every one of us has a great thirst in our lives. Sometimes it's physical, and that's why things like Week of Compassion building water wells around the world is important. Sometimes, though, our thirst is for knowledge, or our thirst is for meaning, or our thirst is for hope, or our thirst is even for salvation. And Jesus says, come and drink of the water I have for you. When we talk about being thirsty, it's almost always physical that we talk about it, but I know that there are people in this room who are dying of the thirst of emotional despair. Looking for hope. Looking for a kind word. Looking for some encouragement. Looking for some peace. I know that in this room there are people who are thirsting after righteousness because in their world nothing seems to be right. There are people thirsting for meaning because everything around them has crumbled and the things they've held on to tightest and most dearly have fallen apart. There are people who are thirsting even for the word of salvation all around us And we have the water of life within us. What are you going to do with your bottle of water? What are you going to do with the water that Jesus promises us in verse 38 of chapter 7 that says, when you believe in me, the water of life comes forth from us gushing like a flooding stream. You have it. Water. I tell people it's, it's really the original milk. We ought to say it does the body good. Not just our physical body. Water does the body of Christ good. Water does the body of our world good. Water does the body of humanity good. What's in it? This label says pure mineral spring water. Do 
gather here in worship. And our thirst for celebration of God's goodness is quenched. We gather here to become God's hands and feet in the world around us and other people's thirst is quenched. The seventh chapter of John's Gospel is one of those that a little background might help you just a little bit. It was a party day. It was a feast day. It was the Feast of Tabernacles, which is like our 4th of July, New Year's Day, and your birthday celebration all rolled into one. It lasted at least seven days. They knew how to party. And on the last day, the greatest day, John tells us, of the feast, Jesus says, in a voice loud enough for everyone to hear. Anyone who drinks of this water shall have life. And it will come forth from within them like a gushing spring. So drink up. Drink up so it can pour forth. Drink up so you can water the seeds you've been planting in the world around you. Drink up so you can bring the gift of life everywhere. And all of God's people said, Amen.